Good evening. I'm Anuka. I visit India often to learn an Indian classical dance called Bharatanatyam. Some of you may have seen me on stage giving Indian dance performances, but that's not why I'm here today. During my several trips to Chennai, I observed my family's cook Manikam and maid Parvati, who came down from their villages, when we call them, to come and work for us. They seemed very hardworking, smart, and honest. And though they were paid generously, my mind always drifted to wondering what they would do if they truly had a choice to learn some skills and have an education like you and me. But with empowerment, what would change in their lives? I wondered and looked at three success stories of rural empowerment projects in India that have revolutionized the nation and I'm happy to share them with you today. Amul, or the Anand Milk Union Limited, is one such story. Before Amul, rural Indian women had to travel far to try and sell all their milk on one day, else it would spoil. In return, they earned pittance. Amul centralized milk production, which prevented spoilage, enabling women to earn daily incomes and get paid deservingly. Amul also promoted democracy by giving the dairy farmers themselves the control over the selling, processing, and marketing. Today, Amul is a great economic success combined with its classically comical ads, as you can see. Can't raise a toast? Try butter. As stated by The Economist, empowerment of the rural people was the real aim and milk, merely the best tool available. Amul created the white revolution, not only skyrocketing India's milk production, but also uplifting the social and economic status of rural producers, especially women. All in all, Amul has shown us the power of single commodity projects to have multi-dimensional impacts. Going back a few years in history, is the story of Khadi. Gandhi believed that empowering rural, empowering Indians would gain them their independence. So he empowered through the charka or the spinning wheel. Rural men and women alike use the spinning wheel to make homespun cloths and refrain from having to buy the unaffordable British manufactured clothes. It was a huge step towards gaining economic independence and defying British dominance. Today, I am proudly wearing a Khadi blouse and jewelry that has helped rural folks gain self-reliance. For the next five years, Gandhi seemingly retired from active agitational politics and devoted himself to the propagation of what he regarded as the social and economic needs of the nation. The charkha, or the spinning wheel, as a concrete symbol of rural self-sufficiency, became a passion with Gandhi, who projected the wheel as a national necessity, which would supplement the slender resources of the poor. The last story I want to talk to you about is Sewa, or the Self-Employed Women's Association in Gujarat, India. This is a project based on Gandhi's principles. Sewa's first goal is to give poor rural women full employment so that they are cared for financially in terms of work, income, and food security. And Sewa's second goal is to teach self-reliance through lessons like literacy, which help these women make their own decisions and solve their own problems. Like Nandubin Srimali, who is a Sewa worker, she says, I work night and day to keep my children in school. Then one day, a senior midwife in my village wanted to teach me her work. And so, I learned slowly to be a midwife. Then I also learned about Sewa. Today, I'm a full-time barefoot doctor and trained midwife. 
I've organized 50 midwives to join SEWA and our, and our midwife cooperative. Last year, I was elected to my village executive committee. Health knowledge and skills help more women during childbirth. I feel like I have been born again after I joined SEWA and my village cooperative. I make a living as a midwife from the cooperative. My dark days are over now, and I feel stronger and secured. So why is empowering rural men and women important to you? Well, you yourselves as students are learning to be empowered for the future. We often think of the less fortunate as those we can help, but we forget that they can help us as much or even more only if they are self-reliant or empowered. So why don't each of us get committed to supporting one rural folk to get to become empowered? I realize that my trips to India will not be complete unless I become a part of the empowerment needed in Parvati and Monica, my domestics. Amul, Gandhi, and Sewa have shown us how empowered rural workers have developed individually and collectively, and even revolutionized a nation. Why? Because to spin Kadi, or to make your country's rural people self-reliant, is the way to a nation's development. So I leave myself and you the next steps. Can we initiate and, ex and expand empowerment projects starting in ISB, like attending this Saturday's Battle of the Bands, hosted by Traffic Jam, an organization which works to empower trafficked individuals, and move on to empowering rural Thai people, to entire Thai villages, and finally, other developing nations. Thank you.